So this is our dilution refrigerator. It's the coldest place in the UCL engineering department. Uh, it works in many ways like your domestic refrigerator at home, but because we have to get very, very cold, we need to use some very unusual cooling techniques. Your fridge at home works by taking a liquid coolant, evaporating it, so that every time that you evaporate a little bit of liquid, it takes in some heat and so cools down the refrigerator. That gas that's evaporated is then circulated around, compressed back into the fridge, into liquid, so it can be evaporated again. And every time it does that, it takes in a bit of heat, which means we're cooling down your fridge. Now this fridge, because we need to get very, very close to absolute zero, in fact, about 20 thousandths of a degree above absolute zero, we can't use the same kind of cooling fluids that we can use in a domestic fridge, because they would all freeze. In fact, by the temperatures that we have to get down to, nothing in the universe is still liquid or gas, apart from helium. Everything else is totally frozen out. So we have a choice of precisely one thing we can use to cool down our fridge. So the first thing that we do is we use high pressure helium gas and we compress this to 20 atmospheres of pressure, evaporate it again, keep doing that in a special device called a pulse tube. And doing that, we can get down to about four Kelvin. That's four degrees above absolute zero. And that is just about cold enough to make helium liquid. And that's the coldest liquid that we're going to get on Earth, in fact, in the universe. Now, that's only the very beginning of this fridge. So this step right up here is about 4 Kelvin. And all the stuff below here is about getting us colder and colder and colder. As I said, when we get to really low temperatures, cooling by simple evaporation is no longer an option. There's nothing left to evaporate. So this is called a dilution refrigerator, and that's because in this little can here, we're cooling by a very special technique that only works due to a quirk of quantum mechanics. Instead of cooling by evaporating our helium atoms into a vacuum with a pump, we're cooling by evaporating one isotope of helium, helium-3, into another isotope called helium-4. Now, helium-4 is the common isotope of helium. It's what you get in party balloons, and it's relatively easy, easily available. And helium-3 is another isotope. That means it's essentially the same type of atom. Uh, it simply has one less neutron in its nucleus. So it's lighter weight per atom, and it has a different way that the atoms interact, which means that we can use this magic method which really doesn't work for any other substance on Earth. The helium-3, the lighter isotope, will float on top of the helium-4 inside this little can. So we use these two separate isotopes of helium. But the magic is that every time a helium-3 atom dissolves in the liquid helium-4, it takes in a tiny amount of heat. And this is the only cooling method we have that's practically available in this temperature range. So this bit of kit exists to enable us to continually dissolve atoms of helium-3 in helium-4. That happens in this little chamber here. And this little chamber up here is called the still. And this is very analogous to how you would distill anything else if you were making some gin, for instance. We have a mixture in here of helium-3 and helium-4. But because the helium-3 has a higher vapor pressure, that means it evaporates more easily than the helium-4. If we pump really hard on here, we can pull the helium-3 out of the helium-4, and we use a giant pump right up there, which pumps that out of the system, and then another set of pumps that return it back in again, so we can dissolve it once more in the helium-4. So that's how the dilution refrigerator works. This cell here, we call it the mixing chamber because that's where the mixing happens between the isotopes. And it's connected to a copper plate here. And this is connected right down here on some rods, which is what we call our cold finger, to a tiny little sample mount here. So the thing that we're actually cooling in this refrigerator is a tiny little electronic device of millimetre scale, which we're cooling via all of this copper. 
So this entire enormous device exists only to get our tiny little sample very, very cold. The reason that we need to get our sample so very, very cold is because as we approach absolute zero, there are no longer any thermal excitations in our sample. At this kind of temperature, we envisage heat as something which is making the atoms shake around in our sample, whatever it is we're cooling down. And the colder we get, the less they're shaking around. And this is very important if we want to do quantum electronics. Quantum electronics is a, a type of electronics where we want to see the individual quantum states of electrons. And this is a massive field at the moment because of the increase in interest in quantum computing. And everybody wants to make devices where you can keep an electron or potentially another type of system in a specific quantum state and use that as an element in computing. Unfortunately, if we have our electron in a warmer uh, sample where everything is shaking around, the thermal energy is enough to knock the electrons out of their quantum state so we can't actually measure anything. So the only way that we can really look at quantum devices and find out what electrons are doing on the quantum level is to cool them down to these extraordinarily low temperatures.